everybody, welcome back to our Shangshung Institute UK lecture series. Uh, we're very happy to have Raphael join us again. He gave a talk last um, uh, June, and so exactly one year later, we're very happy to welcome you back. He's a great expert of Jyotish. I see some people who've come back as well. I'm a great fan of his, so I'm very happy to have you again. And I won't say anything more. The talk will last about an hour, and then we'll have some questions at the end. So if you want to write your questions, in the chat or just keep them for later then we'll have some questions at the end so thank you everybody and welcome back Raf. thank you thank you Jamian and uh, welcome everybody so um, last year we we did a talk on time and energy but when we talked again with Jamian about doing a follow-up we thought healing was more important because as we will see we all went through a major karmic episode, uh, collective karma with the COVID. And then for those of us who are in Europe, we have a war not so far from us, which is another form of collective karma. So we wanted to look at resources for healing and by such guru, Jupiter. So why Jupiter? Uh, by the way, in case you don't know, the color of Jupiter is yellow. Um, it, it's easy if you don't remember the color of the planet, you can call me in the morning and then you will get the right color because I'm big on chromotherapy. So I try to wear the color of the planet on the day of the planet because that's, that's my profession. And then the day of Jupiter is Thursday, which happens to be the day when the Shamsung Institute has their evening talk. So you're trapped. You have to deal with Jupiter tonight. Um, but why, why Jupiter? So, um, and why not another planet and why talking about Jupiter in the context of healing? So in Jyotish, <clears throat> Jupiter is by Sag Guru, the celestial healer. So by the way, for those who saw the ad for the, for the talk, I'm not the celestial healer. I'm just the speaker for the real celestial healer. That is the energy of Jupiter. But why, why Jupiter out of all planets? So for those of you who don't know astrology, there is such a thing as the Kala Purusha, which means the natural order of the constellation of the sky, which traditionally in India is features in the form of Vishnu. And the body of Vishnu, the cosmic body, is connected to a different part of the body. And just like when you're reading your horoscope, we always start with Aries, which corresponds to the head, number one. Vrishaba, which is uh, Taurus, which is the neck, Mituna, which is the arms, Gemini, Karakata, which is the chest, Cancer, and we get to number nine, Danus, which is Sagittarius. Now, why would Sagittarius in particular be connected to healing? Or why would it have a healing energy? Well, that's because... <clears throat> In Jyotish, Jupiter protects mankind. And we need to talk about that, like try to understand what happened. You know, what happened to mankind during those two years where the animals didn't catch the COVID, or maybe a few, you know, poodles and cats and dogs here and there. But this karmic episode was aimed at mankind. And normally, Jupiter is the protector of mankind. We speak about the kavacha, the armor of Jupiter, which is the energy coming from Sagittarius, which is the natural ninth house. The ninth house in the Vedic chart is the house of protection. It's also the house of the guru. It's the house of the blessings, okay? And protection against what? Protection against Saturn, which is disease and especially serious illness and also death, Mars, inflammation, and then what we call Rahu and Ketu, which are the points of the eclipse, the nodes of the moon, as they are called in Western astrology, which are particularly connected with virus, pathogens, and epidemics. If we look at the solar system, we can see this. Where is Saturn here? And where's Mars? Here. Saturn plus Mars is called Yama, the combination of death. 
when these two planets come together, violence plus illness equals death. What stands in the middle? What is the referee that prevents these two from going at each other? Jupiter. So Jupiter from the ninth house gives the blessings to mankind, protects the earth from illness, death, and disease. And when a person blesses you, which part of your body do they touch? They give you a blessing, they touch you here on the head. So Jupiter blesses you from the ninth house and he blesses your forehead. Do you see here the Baba? Why do you think in India people put this on their forehead? And what does it resemble? It is putting the protection of Baisaj Guru on your head as a form of blessing against the dangers of life. This goes even further because <clears throat> if we look at the cosmic body, the last constellation, Mina, which connects to the feet, which is Pisces. Pisces also belongs to Jupiter. Now what's the 12th house? 12th house is hospital, clinics, ICU, nurses. So that is also one aspect to Jupiter that when you are ill, you do need to go to the hospital and you are in the hands of Jupiter again. So that's why Baisaj Guru in, in Vajrayana is the medicine Buddha. But this function of protecting mankind with an armor of protection falls to Jupiter. And each of us, connection to the 9,000 to Jupiter represents our protection against karmic events, such as epidemics. So let's look at, and, and by the way, this is not just in Vedic or Indian mythology. Sagittarius in Greek mythology is the centaur. And the centaur is the half horse, half human being that is the messenger between the gods and the humans <clears throat> and, which is and who is responsible for bringing healing to the human world. Let me give you an example, a very local example. This is a church about 20 kilometers from our place. And I remember going to this church and feeling like there was some kind of special energy well, when I got out of the church, it says that this church was built on the Roman temple of Jupiter. So the worship of Jupiter has been going on for a very long time. Jupiter is faith, okay? And faith is essential to healing. So if we look at even all kinds of symbols, even in the modern world, what does it say on a dollar bill? We trust, trust is Jupiter. If I show you a particular chart of one person here, constellation number nine here, the moon is in Sagittarius. A person with the moon in Sagittarius is, has his mind, the moon, very connected to Jupiter. This is the chart of George Washington, the mind, the, 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 the person behind the foundation of America and this motto of in God we trust. So now let's look together at you know, what happened. How come somewhere between 2020 and 2022, the, the armor, the kavacha, the protective shield of Jupiter stopped working and something happened that um, affected all of us. So if we go into a little bit of a detailed, and I'll try to guide those of you who are not familiar with the Vedic chart, but unfortunately I can't show you exactly how to read this. But remember, we will focus on number nine here. We will focus on the constellation of Sagittarius. Right here. What happens here? Jupiter is here in Sagittarius. But remember who are the malefics in Vedic astrology, the malefics for your health? Saturn, Ketu, right here in Sagittarius. For those of you who know astrology, 
Rahu on the other side of the sky, 180 degrees, is aspecting Sagittarius, means throwing its energy, negative energy connected to virus and pathogens on the constellation of Sagittarius. And then for those of you who really know astrology, there is such a thing as aspects. Mars is right here and Mars aspects four houses away. One, two, three, four. There we go. We have all the malefics hammering Sagittarius. This is the chart of Wuhan, the city of Wuhan in November 2019 when the COVID first appeared. So you see all the conditions for the disappearance of the shield, the kavacha, the armor of protection. Something is happening here. If we go a little further, what happens in 2020, sorry. This is April, 2020. What happened here in Sagittarius, number nine, K2 is still here. Remember K2, the point of the eclipses, the lunar node is particularly connected to epidemics. So something is going on here with an epidemic disease. Where's Jupiter? Here. Saturn is no longer here. Mars is no longer here. But what happens here? Number 10, Capricorn. Capricorn is the constellation of debilitation of Jupiter, which means extreme weakness. Once every 60 years, Jupiter falls into Capricorn next to Saturn and remains trapped in this position of weakness. And this lasted from um, March, April 2020 until November 2021. Jupiter trapped by Saturn. What is Jupiter? It's freedom of movement. What is Saturn and Capricorn? It's rigid. So all of this time, if some of you were in lockdown, you couldn't move. If you wanted to move, you had to have a piece of paper or something on your iPhone that said you're authorized to go walk your dog once a week. And if you wanted to move, you also have to have a pass with some vaccination or proof of PCR test, et cetera, et cetera. So when we put these two charts together, you see the appearance of the virus by virtue of Sagittarius being hammered by the malefics. And then during this whole period of the COVID until essentially the end of 21, Jupiter was extremely weak like it happens once every 60 years. So this combination of losing the protection and having the protector of mankind becoming very weak was what created this exceptional circumstance. But it's not the only time. If we go back in time, we can look at the Spanish flu, okay, which was uh, 1918. And I don't remember the exact amount of deaths that were connected to the Spanish flu, but I think somewhere between above 50 million people died at that time. And that's enormous. So you can see here, once again, number nine, Sagittarius, Rahu. If Rahu is here, K2 is aspecting. So that's a double negative energy. And for those of you who know aspects, Mars is here and Mars is throwing an aspect four houses away, one, two, three, four. So we also have Mars falling onto Sagittarius and hammering. Um, Saturn is not playing a role here, but those of you who know astrology, Mars is very close to the moon and the moon relates to chest and lungs and lymph. So that of course plays a role in a disease like the flu. Um, we can go back further in time because this is the 20th century and 21st century. But when we go back in time, we can look at the chart of what was called the Black Death, the great plague of the 14th century, the 1300s. 
So at first sight, it doesn't look like anything. Look, right here, Sagittarius is empty. There doesn't seem to be a negative energy here. But once again, Mars and Rahu, and Mars and Rahu are throwing an aspect. One, two, three, four. So you have all this combination coming onto Sagittarius. And for those of you who really know astrology, we have a Kala Sarpa. We have the snake. All the planets are stuck between Rahu and Ketu. So this is pretty advanced stuff, but this is the influence of the Nagas. Okay. I'm borrowing all this information about Black Death and Plague in the Middle Ages from a fantastic presentation done by Pandit Sanjay Rat in the uh, Vedic Astrology uh, Conference, the European Conference in 2021. For those of you who are really interested in getting all these details, the recording should still be available on the website of the BAVA, the British Association for Vedic Astrology. So this is another combination where we see the shield of Sagittarius and Jupiter disappearing under the malefics. Let's go back in time if you want to. The what's what called the Justinian plan, the plague of the Emperor Justinian at the time of Constant Constantinople and Rome, which happened in the sixth century. Sagittarius, look at this. Look how. Rahu is right there. Mars and Ketu are respecting Sagittarius. And if you know aspect, Saturn aspects three houses away. One, two, three. A full aspect of Saturn falling onto Sagittarius. Another case of the shield, the kavach, the protective shield of mankind being hammered away by the malefic. So, we, we went through this, and by the way, if we go back to the chart of the COVID, humanity got out of it. How did we get out of it? We got out of it because Jupiter here in 2019, during the appearance of the COVID, is in Sagittarius. Sagittarius belongs to Jupiter, which means when the virus appeared in Wuhan, Jupiter was strong, despite the fact of being hammered by malefics. What does that mean? That means that at some point, the celestial healer will work. What does that represent? Doctors? medicine, viruses, plants. Few people know that the Chinese hospitals in Wuhan put all of their patients on a formula of uh, Chinese plants that was very effective in re reducing the symptoms for the COVID. So in any case, this shows right from the beginning that at some point, the strength of Jupiter will overcome the virus and the epidemic. Because you need to remember what the Black Plague was about. 200 million people died. That was 60% of the population of Europe. So compared to that, the death rate in the COVID is very low. And the protection at some point played to protect humanity against it. Okay. So the question becomes, you know, what do we do with this? How do we heal? Um, this is a collective phenomena and we can't heal a collective phenomena by ourselves. But what we can do is working on our own energy. And the best way to do it is to go to the very, very intimate level of energy, which is our body. Where is Jupiter in our body? If we want to heal, the energy of Jupiter, it is in the liver. The Sanskrit word for the liver is yakrut. Ya means circulate. So what circulates? What circulates is ranjakapita, the bile. 
And then the liver is also responsible for red blood cell, the shape, the color, the quality of the red blood cells. And that circulates in the body. The other word is very interesting, krut, create, the Sanskrit root. The liver is the organ that is the root of our creativity. It's also the root of our anger. Well, how can that be? Well, that's because if the energy gets stuck, it doesn't circulate. If the chi, the liver chi doesn't circulate, instead of creativity, you get anger, which is not so good. So basically, we all need to realize we have been through an extended period of almost two years where our liver has been crushed. You know, we, we had a, a conjunction of um, Jupiter, and Jupiter is yellow, and Saturn, especially Capricorn. Capricorn is metal. It's also called Smashan, the graveyard. So it is connected to death, but it's especially connected to metal. So um, I guess a little quiz here. What is yellow and gets crushed by metal? Answer, a lemon being squeezed. So we've all been through a period of being like squeezed lemons. Our livers have been very stressed. Our creativity has been reduced to the minimum. And somewhere around the experience of being stuck in a studio with three kids who can't go to school, we might have developed a little bit of anger or frustration in the way. So how do we heal our liver? And by the way, in Ayurveda, the liver is extremely complex and central to so many things. For instance, the five elements are digested through our liver. We call this the Bhuta Agni. Bhuta are the five elements and Agni is our digestive system. So each of the five elements are metabolized by the liver, space, air, fire, water, and earth, and foods are connected to the five elements. One application of this, for instance, is people at some point, if their liver is damaged, will stop digesting a specific type of food. Which one? Well, for instance, the first foods that people very often stop digesting are is dairy. Milk, cheese, butter. Why is that? Because dairy is connected to water. So very often when the liver doesn't work, people stop digesting water foods. Or if you become gluten intolerant, gluten is a fire cereal, grain. So you stop digesting fire and foods that have too much fire, you can't digest them. And then gradually maybe other foods, you can't digest them. And the last thing that we're going to use is the... Um, the liver is reflected in the quality of the vision and in the eyes. It's, a, it's a, a system that is common to Ayurvedic, Tibetan, and Chinese medicine. The, the liver is the flower, the powder, sorry, the eyes is the, the flower of the liver in the same way that the ears are the flower of the kidneys. The kidneys control the hearing and the liver controls the vision. So, if I was to select remedies for each of your livers to heal the energy of Jupiter, I couldn't do that because I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner and I would need to take your pulse and to do an individualized consultation and give you a remedy that works specifically for your constitution, for your Prakruti and for your Vikruti. And I don't do that over Zoom because I don't believe you can do that over Zoom. So what do we do? Well, it's possible to get to the root by entering through the flower. So what I chose to suggest is we can all work on our liver and heal our liver by working on the eyes. What is a way of working with the eyes? In Ayurveda, there is a specific type of, you can call it a healing techniques or a meditation that you can use called Trataka. 
Trataka is gazing at a gi lamp. This is what a gi lamp looks like. And as it shows in the um, document that you will have at the end of the conference, you will put this gi lamp at the distance of one arm in front of your eyes and you will gaze at the light for five to 10 minutes without blinking. So what happens when you gaze in Trataka at the gi lamp? Well, what happens is there is something about the luminosity of gi that is very healing. Now, this is very important. Don't do this with a candle, even a wax candle, because what is healing here is the, the, the light, the type of light that ghee um, creates that is a very soft, bright, yet very soft and very healing type of light. And it tells you here in the document how to do it. So what happens? The eyes are both the flower and they're a filter. Of course, when you gaze at a ghee lamp, you will start crying. So what happens is what we call in Ayurveda pitta, the inflammation, the heat, the energy that is stuck. We call this alochaka pitta. Alochaka pitta is the heat, the pitta that resides in the eyes. But alochaka pitta and naranjaka pitta, which is in liver, are connected. When you stimulate one, you cleanse the other. So this is a great meditation. It's very good for the mind because you're focusing your mind, but it's also a very, way, a very good way to cleanse the liver and cleanse the energy of the liver. Of course, each person is different. Some of you will barely um, cry and others might have a pack of Kleenexes by your side because it might be that all of a sudden, a lot of pitta comes out through the eyes. Very good. Don't do it more than 10 minutes in, in the beginning. I mean, you might extend it to maybe 15 minutes, but don't overstress the eye. And I stress it again, don't use a candle, even a natural candle, only use ghee. Why? Because Ghee is a very profound substance in Ayurveda. It's not just clarified butter. It has a quality of penetration. So you can do an experiment, which would be to take a pack of tissue and put a drop of water, put a drop of oil, olive oil, and put a drop of ghee. What you will see is that ghee penetrates through the layer of cloth or Kleenex and it goes deep in the body. So that's why it's used in Ayurveda, because if you're trying to act on the internal organs and then the deep layer in the body, ghee goes very far. So sorry for those of you who are vegans, but in Ayurveda, there's a sort of partnership between the cow, which will we meet again, and humans, the cow produces one third more milk than the calf can use. That one third is for humans and is specifically for yogis. Yogis use ghee because if, you're, if you are a yogi and you do yoga and you do pranayama, you need something that will lubricate your body in depth and go very deep inside the body. And that's the specialty of ghee. There is one type of ghee in particular that you can bring together one. It's all yellow, okay? Today is your, your yellow day, you didn't know. There is one great thing about ghee, which is yellow, is that you can mix it with a great yellow spice and make turmeric ghee. You'll get the recipe. That is the supreme ghee for the liver. Fantastic. Thank you, Hakim. You made your own. 
and it tastes good. There is another ghee that is used to go even deeper for those of you who really have maybe some kind of toxicity in the liver, which is called bitter ghee. But honestly, if you ever tasted bitter ghee, I don't think you would thank me for suggesting to um, eat it because it is particularly bitter, but it works, it's great. But in the meantime, let's just, you know, have a tri dough shake universal remedy that anybody can use, other two remedies for your liver, turmeric ghee and trataka. Remember, all of us have had a stressed out liver for a solid two years. Some of us are born with a very well-placed Jupiter in the chart, so they maybe they didn't feel it. But those of you who were born with a weak Jupiter do remember that the period of the COVID was quite stressful for that part of your body, okay? Um, if you have any questions about these techniques for liver, just write them in the chat and I'll try to get to them. Now, basically, Jupiter finally got out of its weakness when it entered Pisces on April 13th where in the context of the next 12 months until May, April, May of, of 2023, Jupiter will be strong again, <sighs> finally. So that means we, call, we can all heal our liver or do some kind of process where we heal our livers. But in case you didn't notice, we barely had time to enjoy the fact that the COVID was leaving or at least settling down that something else happened a war so this is the chart of the ukraine invasion the day this is the 24th of february 2022 6 a.m in moscow russia when a certain Vladimir P decides to invade Ukraine and launch his army. What do we see here in Sagittarius number nine? Mars. But what happens here? Mars is at 28 degrees 17 of Sagittarius and Venus is at 2740. It's in the same degree. We call that in Jyotish Graha Yudha a planetary war, kind of like Star Wars, but planetary war. These two are crushing each other, but in the case, Mars is crushing Venus. Now, I wondered about that, and how could that be a coincidence? Because if you think about it, Venus is the planet of compassion, love, and human connection. If you want to launch an army of young people, male young people, which relates to Mars, and you want them to invade a country where people pretty much speak the same language, so there might be a feeling of, well, they're kind of like us. What do you choose for a day? Choose a day when Mars is crushing Venus. That way you can give these young people orders of, Go and ignore your feelings. So I've been wondering about if Vladimir Putin was using astrology counseling, it wouldn't really look any different. It's quite amazing, in fact. But let's not go into that direction or talking about war or politics or anything like this. What I mean is this is another karmic collective event. Um, of course, those of us who live in Europe might be a lot more affected by what's going on. But in, in Vedic astrology, it affects all of our Venuses. Because it's like, a, it, it's like a, an earthquake, you know, and I, I can see in my clientele that in the month following end of February, I had, for instance, a lot of people with cystitis which is an infection of the kidneys. Kidneys relates to Venus, urinary problems, et cetera, et cetera. And inflammation relates to Mars. 
So you can even see the impact of this war event on the health of many people. So here's the second suggestion. Venus is the other great benefic of the Vedic chart, not exactly in the same way as Jupiter. Jupiter is the master of healing and healers and medicine. Venus is called Sanjivani. Sanjivani, which means the lifesaver, the giver of life and the giver of rejuvenation. Rejuvenation, meaning there is in Ayurveda a very profound notion of something that circulates inside our body. And that something, which is the pure essence of all the tissues, this is from my Ayurvedic teacher, Dr. Ladd, this something circulates throughout the body. Okay, so here's the view of the human body according to Ayurveda. We are made of seven tissue, plasma, blood, muscle, fat, bone, marrow, and reproductive. And when you digest food, food turns into plasma, then blood, then muscle. The end result of all the digestion of all the food in your body is producing this little something called ogis, which will then circulate throughout the body. And for instance, a symptom of low ogis would be that you have a cut and you're not able to heal that cut. The tissue is not healing or you might have a fall. All of a sudden you catch the flu and 20 years ago, you used to be able to get over it in one day and now you need five days. What does that mean? That's ojas kshaya. You have lost ojas. There is not enough fluid to repair the engine. So think about it when you, know, when you have an engine of a, of a machine or, or a car, you need the uh, oil to circulate throughout. So the power of Venus, because Venus is connected to the reproductive organs, is holding the ojas the life-saving fluid that is kept in the reproductive system, but from there circulates to all the body. Luckily in Ayurveda, there is a knowledge of Rasayana, which is the science of repairing ojas. How do we do to repair this? So here, once again, if really we were to do an Ayurvedic consultation, I would need to take your Vikriti, your Prakriti, your pulses, do a full-on diagnosis and know exactly which plant, which combination of plants, which foods. But here I was presented with the challenge of finding things that are universal and that can work for all of us. So Ras Ayana, Ras means juice and Ayana means kind of like drawing or, you know, extracting. So there is juice in nature. There are things that have juices and we can put that in our body and extract the juice and transform it into ojas. So Michelle and I, she's, she's uh, my partner is really the expert in Ayurvedic nutrition. We're suggesting two things because nature does produce juice in the form of essences. Nature is great at the notion of extracting things and making an essence out of it. How does it work? Well, we talked about it already. Ghee, what's ghee? It's the essence of grass. Who extracts the essence? The sacred cow. Why is the cow so sacred in, in Vedic literature and in Indian culture? Because it's the great alchemist. It takes something, and it transform it into something which is milk. Milk becomes butter, butter becomes ghee. So that's one first essence. And then there's another creature, smaller, that is fantastic. That is taking something out of flowers and making an essence out of it called honey. So we have two essences. We go on the left side. Humans have learned how to extract the sap of trees in the form, for instance, of maple syrup, which is considered very rich in ojas in Ayurveda. 
And then the earth. What's in the earth? Roots. Roots are the essence of what is in the earth. It's like something is pulling all the juices from the earth and then turning it into something that can be consumed. So of course, there are so many plants and so many roots. I've tried to come up with something Ayurvedic that can be practically tridoshic and used by everybody. Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha looks like this. This is our ashwagandha that is actually on our terrace. Um, not exactly like this, right now it's raining, but it's, um, it's growing well, even in the south of France. So there's no reason it couldn't be planted. This is what it looks like when you extract the root and that you made it out of a powder. Ashwagandha is a, an adaptogen, which means when you take it, it adapts itself to your body. If you take it at night, it will make you sleep. If you take it in the morning, it will give you energy. It works on helping your body secrete the hormones and what you need at the time that you need it. It's an intelligent plant. Okay? The only um, contraindication for ashwagandha is that it's slightly warming. So if some of you have a hot constitution, I would not be taking ashwagandha anywhere between May and September. But otherwise, it's tridoshic. <clears throat> Anybody can use ashwagandha, especially if you're fatigued. It's a great plan for giving you uh, a restful sleep. It doesn't make you sleep. It's not a, it's not a somnifer. It's not something that will induce sleep, but it gives you a better quality sleep, which is very important. And there's the last mysterious substance that I wanted to present called shilajit. Shilajit is the essence of rocks, the essence of mountains. It is a dark substance that looks like this, sorry, that comes out of the rocks in summer. And scientists disagree as to what it is exactly. Is it a mineral? Is it a plant? Is it etc.? It is basically the, the remains of primordial forest that collapsed and that substance when deep inside the rocks. With the heat, it comes out. In the Himalayas, apparently, monkeys and elephants look for it. So maybe they know. In the old days, yogis uh, in the yogic tradition would do retreats with only water and shilajit. There would be extended yoga and pranayama and meditation retreats surviving on just shilajit and water. Now, shilajit is very warming. So it can only be consumed in the winter month between October and April, unless you live in Alaska or <clears throat> Greenland maybe. But otherwise that's among all the essences that is the most warming. So you can do your own arasayana or chulen by mixing one or two or three or four or five of these substances, okay? Of course, if you have some kind of sugar sensitivity, you might not want to have honey and maple at the same time, but I'll leave it up to you. This is what little rejuvenative balls would look like with all five substances, ghee, honey, shilajit, ashwagandha, and maple. I'm showing you, can you see? And it is absolutely delicious. Um, Shilajit can be found nowadays online. It looks like this, like a paste. Um, you shouldn't be paying. I, I once saw a little something like this sold for $350. Don't be swindled by people who buy this. This in Kathmandu is worth a euro and 50 cents. So don't pay $350, please. Okay, and then another suggestion, maybe a little more easy. This is coming from an Ayurvedic teacher, uh, Dr. Vasant Lad, of a rejuvenative drink called Ojas Milk. You will have the recipe here. So it's essentially a almond, date, 
um, mix that you, you put in a blender. Almonds are very rich in oils, so are dates. You have the recipe here. You can use organic cow's milk, or goat's milk, or non-dairy milk, or almond milk. You can use saffron, you can use flaxseed, dates. You can add the uh, maple syrup or honey for oils. It is something that is very good as a afternoon snack or breakfast. And it's something that we've seen our Ayurvedic teacher give to uh, people who are chronically weak in ojas, like for instance, after a chemotherapy or fighting an illness or a burnout or after childbirth, you know, women have a particular important job because when you give birth to a baby, you give your ojas to the baby. So you need to give yourself the ojas back. That's why you know, women should always take three or six months to rejuvenate their ojas. Otherwise, what happens? You pay the bill at 50. It's called menopause. And the less ojas you have, the worse your menopause will be. So take care of yourself. Okay. So these are the two great benefits, Jupiter and Venus, and how to rejuvenate Jupiter and Venus when these planets, by virtue of collective karma, are stressed and we feel the effect. But what else can we do? when the planets are working well, we go to the stars. We go to the next level. We go beyond because in Vedic astrology, we are not just connected to planets. Beyond the planets are the stars. So here are the constellations that you know, Aries, Pisces, Aquarius. And beyond this, there is the mandala, of the 27 stars. Sometimes there's a 28 star that comes into the picture, but I won't go into that. The 28 stars that are the real mandala. And of course, like I explained last year in my vision of astrology, we're not so much talking about the planets or the stars out there. What we are dealing with with remedies is how you can act on these energies inside of you. Because if we had time, we could go into the details of each star corresponds to a marma point, of energy points in your body. Um, the liver and Jupiter correspond to a point here called Yakrut, which is a marma point that you can stimulate. So what we're talking about here is the mandala of the sky, but this mandala of the sky is, is in your body. This is what yogis do. Yogis will control their own energy in the mandala of their body so that they're not subjected to the changes in the sky and in the planetary energy. And that way you become self-sufficient. So how do we work with this mandala? Here it is. The 27 nakshatras, the 27 group of stars. So here you have the exact position in the sky. You see Ashwini, the first star, is the beginning of Aries. And each star will be an orb of 13.20 degrees in the sky. So then you have Aries to Taurus, Taurus to Gemini, Gemini to Cancer. And this goes all the way until Pisces, which is the 12th constellation. And then we're back in Aries. Each star has a ruler. This is the information that is important here. Each of these 27 stars is controlled by a planet. This is how we'll be able to work with it. So you have this information here. Graha means planet. Each star is connected to a um, planet that is the ruler or the boss of that part of the sky. You have another table here that is more easy to use because they go by group of three. Three stars for K2, three stars for Venus, three stars for the sun, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now, how do we work with this? Two really important things you need to know about your energy body to be able to heal. You were born with a moon nakshatra. When you were born, your moon was somewhere aligned 
somewhere in the sky in one of these 27 constellations. We call that lunar constellation. You need to know that, why? Because that star controls the flow of prana in your body and in your mind. It's your birth star. It's actually the most important thing you should know about yourself. And it is so important in India or in the Vedic tradition that a child is named after the birth star. So we wait after the birth because each star is connected, each nakshatra is connected to certain syllables. And we will give you a name that is connected to your birth star so that every time someone calls your name, it's a mantra. It harmonizes your energy just because I call your name. So this is fundamental, knowing your moon nakshatra. And then the other piece that is very important is what we call the Samna, the Lord of your moon nakshatra. As I showed you, each of these stars have a ruler. So that's the second thing you need to know. What planet controls your moon nakshatra? The Samnat, that planet, is the planet holding the flow of prana in your body and mind. It's your direct connection to the stars, like the relay between you and the healing star. And then the other thing that I want you to know is your Vaidyanat. Vaidya means doctor. This is a little technical. This is the planet that controls the 24th nakshatra from your moon nakshatra. So we count. We go here in the table and let's say your moon nakshatra is chitra right here, 14. So I'm going to count. And in Vedic astrology, we always count inclusive meaning one is Chitra, two is Swati, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Maga. That means that if your moon nakshatra if your if your birth star is chitra then your vaidyanat the nakshatra 24 stars away is maga so now you know how to count why is this important because the planet that controls the nakshatra 24 stars away represents your resources for healing. This is what controls whether you're going to find doctors, healers, remedies, because it's one thing to have something with the flow of prana in your body. But when you get ill, unless you are yourself a doctor, you need to have access to a doctor. And how do we know if you're going to find, what can you do to make sure you find the right doctor, the right remedies, the right medicine? You work with that planet. The Lord of the 24th nakshatra will give you resources so that you can heal. If we were to do a whole evening about nakshatras, we could go on and on. Because for instance, the nakshatra, where your Jupiter is placed. Jupiter is the spiritual path, guru. The planet that holds that nakshatra is your guru nak, meaning it is the door to knowledge and spiritual growth. Shukra nak, shukra is Venus. The lord of the nakshatra where your Venus is placed, that's the door to relationship and marriage. Buddha nak, Buddha is Mercury. The Lord of the Nakshatra where your Mercury is placed. That's the door to career, job, and profession. But let's leave it behind. Let's focus today on healing. Okay? We'll talk about relationship a little later. Okay? Now, you're going to ask me, but how, how are you going to find your moon Nakshatra? How can you know it? Well, it's not that difficult. 
you need to download a free software, which is a gift by one of the uh, great modern astrologer, uh, Narasimha Rao. So he created this Vedic astrology software that you can download online. Um, there are some uh, tutorials also on how to use it because I don't want to waste too much time. You enter your data and then what do you get? You get something like this, which will indicate nakshatra, which means your moon nakshatra. Here is mula. Okay, it's in the list that I showed you earlier, right here, mula. And mula is controlled by ketu. So you can see here, you will have your little data about yourself, mula controlled by ketu. So you have it. K2, in this case, would be your Somnat, the planet holding the flow of prana. If we take an extra example here, this person has an anakshatra Rohini. Rohini is the fifth star. And the fifth star right here, sorry, the fourth star is connected to the moon. So for this person, the Somnat, the planet that holds the flow of prana is going to be the moon. And if this person wants to get well, they should work with their moon. They should find a way to strengthen the energy of the moon. And of course, that'll be my job tonight to suggest how you can work with the energy of the planets. Let's look at some examples here. And here, of course, for those of you who don't know astrology or how to read the chart, take it easy. You will learn little by little. So we have here a person who has as a planet holding the flow of prana, Ketu. Where is Ketu? For those of you who want to know how to read the chart, it's here in the second house. Second house is food, what you eat and what you drink. So how do we make sure this person has good prana? We want to make sure they eat and drink well, good things. It's particularly important for them. Now, if I want to know their vaidyanat, which is if they get ill, how are they going to find resources for healing? Okay, you can do the calculation yourself. Okay, so this person is connected to the star Mula. And when I count 24 from Mula, I arrive here at Swati. The Lord of Swati is Rahu. For those of you who know how to read the chart, Rahu is placed in the eighth house of chronic illness. That is not good. If this person doesn't eat and drink well, they will have a hard time finding resources to heal. Very hard time. This is the chart of Amy Winehouse, which is really the worst combination because she drank alcohol instead of good drinks and food, and she wasn't able to find any help goes even further, I showed you that Rahu was supposed to bring healing. She actually passed away in a period of Rahu. This is when she died. Now, of course, you can ask the question, could something have been done? Sure, of course. But this is the case of someone who has a very hard time finding resources unless we could work on her energy of Rahu. Let's find something more hopeful. Second example, Rohini. This person has Rohini as controlling, the moon controls the flow of prana. Moon is here in the ninth house, the spiritual house in Taurus, exalted moon. This is excellent. This is a great flow of prana. And this is the gift of the spiritual house makes things short, this person is a client of mine who developed a prostate cancer. Venus relates to the prostates, placed in the 12th house. 
he was able to heal himself by doing mantra. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of mantras. Six months of mantra practice. Came back to the doctor. The doctor said, it's gone. He knows how to work with his moon. Last example. Purva Falguni. Okay, Purva Falguni belongs to Venus. Venus is holding the flow of prana. And look at what is happening here. Venus is placed near the moon. That means the planet that is controlling the moon is placed near the moon. The planet holding the flow of prana is placing itself near the moon. This is an excellent combination for health. This is the chart of the Dalai Lama, His Holiness Kundun. And since it's going to be his birthday in six days from now, he has said himself that of himself that he intend to live past 100. I would tend to think the Vedic chart confirms that that is a possibility. Okay. So finding your samnat, finding your vanyanat, that's essential to health. But health is sometimes it's not just physical health. We're not isolated in a box somewhere or in a meditation cave. We're in relationship. Venus relates to relationship. The moon relates to relationship. And our health is connected to our relationships. I wanted to suggest a last thing you need to know about yourself. What controls relationship in your life? It is your lunar day. Lunar day means that a lunar month is divided between Amavasya, which is the new moon, the dark moon, no moon, and then Purnima, which is the full moon. And you have 15 days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 days leading to the full moon, and then 15 days leading to the new moon. You were born in one of these days. When you were born, the moon was somewhere. It was either in Pratama or Pratipad, which is the first day of the moon, or it was in Ashtami, which is the eighth, or it was in Dashami, which is the 10th. And it was either in the, what we call the bright, a rising phase of the moon towards the full moon or the descending phase of the moon when it goes towards the dark moon. You need to know that because that lunar day decides of the nature of relationship in your life. In fact, it goes even further. Your lunar day is your share of the moon nectar. This is even more important than Ojas, the nectar of the universe. It's your good karma. It's your ability to preserve your good karma. It's your deeper nature. And in fact, if we had time, it represents what made you come back. Why are you reborn? Unless you are a professional yogi in a cave, you were reborn to be involved with others in the world. So if you want to know how that works, you need to know your titi. And here's the same thing. It's the titi lore that you need to know because each of these days is controlled by a certain planet. They go by pairs. The first and ninth day of the moon is controlled by the sun. The second and the 10 is controlled by the moon. The third and 11th, Tritiya and Ekadasi are controlled by Mars. You need to know that because this planet rules how you deal with relationship, love, marriage, along with your natal Venus, if we were to be really precise, we will also need to involve Venus. But let's stay with this, the T, your lunar day. This is something that you will get in the program. Again, okay, sorry. The program here, when you enter your data, will tell you what is your T. Here it's Chaturdasi. Chaturdasi, if you go here, is controlled by 
Venus. So the titty lord for this person, the planet that controls relationship is Venus. For those of you who knows astrology, how is it Venus? It's in Virgo. It's the weakest place for Venus. It's a very weak Venus. This is the chart of Prince Charles. Unfortunately, not a happy man in relationship by any means. Why? Because the titty lord is very weak. Okay, let's take another example. This person has dhanishta, sorry, shasti. We're looking at the titty, shasti. You look at the table. Shasti is controlled by Venus. Again, these are the two controlled by Venus, shasti and Chaturdasi. So where is Venus? Venus here, not bad. But look here, Saturn, exalted Saturn right in front of it. That doesn't look good unless you strengthen Venus. Well, I don't know if Marilyn Monroe really worked on her ditty. So that's the chart of Marilyn. Not a very happy person in relationship either. And you can see this from the planet that is controlling relationship being very badly placed in front of a nasty Saturn. Let's get better examples. Tritya. Okay, Shukla Tritya. What controls Tritya? Mars is the planet ruling relationship for this person. How's is Mars? Mars and Aries. Aries belongs to Mars, placed in the third house, the sports and action. That is the chart of Paul Newman. 50 years of marriage. How did he do 50 years of marriage? What's the passion of Paul Newman? Driving fast cars. Mars and Aries. So he indulged in his passion. And I don't think he knew it. But by doing sports car, he was strengthening his marriage. Last example. Titi, Dwitiya. Dwitiya here is ruled by the moon. The moon holds relationship in this person's life. How's this moon? It's in Cancer. Fantastic. Cancer is the house of the moon. The moon is very strong. It's placed in the second house of speech. If this person speaks a lot, he will strengthen his marriage and relationship life. This is the chart of Tom Hanks. 35 years of marriage. Not bad. Well, just by, by being an actor, he was strengthening his marriage. Now, we don't all have the possibility of, you know, driving uh, Ferraris around a, um, a, a circuit or being a world famous actor. So how do you purify your titty? How do you work with a plant or relationship? So here, it's more about purifying than strengthening. You need to purify that energy. How do you purify? Two ways. Mono diet, kitchery. Okay. Find out which planet holds relationship in your life. And I'll explain to you how to select the day that goes with it. And do a mono diet. You'll get the recipe of Michelle's famous kitchery among the PDF. It is the dish that would, they would give you in a clinic in India if you went for a Panchakarma 28 day cure. It's a mono diet of a cleansing dish. Or even better, liquid diet. Because these are the days of the moon. The moon is water. So if on that day you only do either a liquid fast or a liquid recipe like this green tonic, See, this looks definitely green. You'll turn into Kermit. 
and your relationship will be very happy. Okay, that is the perfect way to purify the energy of relationship in your life. Okay, time is flowing forward. So um, let's just one last thing. There will be days that are particularly important in the year. Once a year, the moon will be in your pity in the sun in the same constellation. This is your real birthday. Because the birthday in the West is like, let's say I was born on the 26th of March. So every time there's a 26th of March, that's my birthday. That's not the real birthday. The real birthday is in the month of your birth, find out when the same lunar day comes back. This is the real replicate of the sky at the moment you came out of your mother's womb. The sun, the father, and the moon, the mother are in the same position. If you fast on that day, you purify the whole year. There is another birthday that is important for your prana once a year to take care of your prana. When the sun is in the same constellation, let's say Aries in March, and the moon is in your nakshatra, the birth nakshatra that we talked about earlier, okay? That holds the flow of prana. That's another very important day in, in the year. And that changes every year. And if you really wanna work on your energy every month, the moon goes back to the same lunar day as you were born. That's a great day for cleansing. And the moon comes back to the same nakshatra as you were born every month. That's a great day to work on your energy and your prana. Okay. How to make sense of this? Okay. So let's summarize before we move on to the question. Strengthen Jupiter, strengthen Venus. Finding your moon nakshatra, which means you'll find which planet it is. Your, your Vaidyanat, the planet for resources of healing, you'll find which planet with the program. And your Titi Lord. So you have all this. How do you work with it? You work with remedies. You apply remedies. If we were to talk about all the possible remedies, we'll be here at midnight. Okay. But a remedy, Upaya in Vedic astrology, means you apply it on the right planet and at the right time. Those of you who followed my talk last year will remember this wheel of time, which means that each day is divided into hours of the sun, hours of Mars, hour of Jupiter. This comes from the Kala Chakra, like I explained last year, okay? This is very important, especially if you're lazy. Because if you're lazy, you don't want to be doing a, res a, a remedy all the time. You want to find that little window of time each week when you can have the maximum effect with the least effort. That's great for busy people. So for those of you who don't know astrology, each of the constellation and the planets relates to a day of the week. Mars relates to Tuesday, Venus to Friday, Mercury to Wednesday, Moon to Monday, Sun to Sunday, Mercury, Virgo. So let's take an example here, okay? Let's take this person here. And he has as nakshatra, Pushyami is ruled by Saturn. Where is Saturn? Saturn is here in Scorpio, okay? So how does this person work on his nakshatra lord, the planet that holds Tom Hanks? How does Tom Hanks work on his prana? Well, he has Saturn and Scorpio. What is Scorpio? Scorpio belongs to Mars. What is the day of Mars? Tuesday. And we go to Tuesday. What is the hour of Saturn on Tuesday? It's between 12 p.m. and 1.30 p.m. This is the best window in the week if Tom Hanks wanted to strengthen his prana. Not a very practical time, but hey, that's how it is. Let's take another example here. This person has as nakshatra, just like me, shathabishak, which belong to Rahu. Where is this Rahu? It is placed in Cancer. Cancer belongs to the moon. So we're looking at Monday. 
And we want to look at the hour of Rahu on Monday. When is the hour of Rahu on Monday? From 7.30 to 9. That is the best time for that person to work on his prana via the samnat, the planet that holds the flow of prana. You can apply the same thing to the Vajana. You remember that planet, that star 24 stars away, that gives you resources for your healing. How can you get resources for your healing? By identifying your Vajana and finding which planet here will bring me healing. And when you find that planet, you look into the program to understand where it is placed in which constellation. And then you identify which day it connects to. And then you go in the table and you find the exact best time to do your remedy. But which remedy? I mean, there's so many remedies. So I've selected a few remedies that you can apply easily. Okay, Remedies basically work with the five elements and our five organs of perception, okay? There are infinite remedies in Vedic astrology, chromotherapy, lithotherapy, yantra, vastu shastra, sound, mantra, fire ceremony, rituals, basma, everything is possible, but we can't cover it all. So one thing I suggest is mineral elixirs. Which again, if I was to recommend a gemstone for you, I need to do a consultation. Gemstones are so strong and it's so sensitive that if I, if I suggest the wrong gemstone, just based on one or two elements of your chart, I'm not doing my job. But elixir are subtle remedies, okay? So I suggest you work with elixirs. And here you have a list of planets and Gemstone. Sometimes you can find planetary elixir, some um, anthroposophic uh, Rudolf Steiner practitioners, they make them, or you can make your own. Today is Jupiter Day. This is a yellow sapphire elixir, which means I have a little yellow sapphire, but that was a gift of a gemologist friend. You can use amber for Jupiter. You can use, sorry. Uh, topaz, citrine, etc., and you will put this in some grain alcohol and let it sit for a month. If you are very interested in the Vedic remedies, you can use the yantra, the mandala of Jupiter, and put it on there so that it infuses your elixir. Now, this is your mother tincture. When your mother tincture is ready, you will take another dropper, fill it with pure water, a spring water, and put three droppers of the mother tincture in here and put three drops under the tongue, either every morning, or if you want to work with Jupiter, you can do it on Thursday, the day of Jupiter, or any other day or any day. Okay. You can do a Jupiter tincture with a yellow stone. You can do a Venus tincture with diamond, white sapphire, rose quartz. You can have fun. You can do your own remedies or you can do online if you can find them. Other way to work with remedies for planets, activities. Each planet has activities that strengthen it and allow you to connect with the energy of the planet. It's like there's something in the realm of human activities that connects to each planet. How do you connect to the sun? The sun likes to be outside. Activities in nature, five element activities work or shamanic work, working with the power of nature. Moon, moon is water. Water sports activities, fasting, liquid diet. Meditation, the moon is the mind. Mars, Mars likes to sweat, it's the blood. Martial arts, sports, sweating. Mars is prana and energy, energy healing. Mercury, communication, singing, speaking, the hands, forest, which is greenery. Jupiter is creativity. Jupiter relates to children, spiritual practice, 
rituals. Venus connects to the arts, music, dance, friends, horseback, Venus raised to horses. Saturn, Saturn likes cleaning, detox, personal Shabbat, doing taking a day to cleanse, karma yoga, helping the poor, the elderly, Saturn likes service, Rahu, traveling, video, images, circus, magic, rap, improv improvising, impro, language, Ketu, meditation, retreat, ashrams, monastery, intuition, writing, ancestors. You can take time at home and find which activity will allow you to strengthen your Samnat, the Lord of Prana, your Vaidyanat, the Lord of Resources for Healing, and your Titi Lord, the planet for relationship. Last suggestion, giving, dana. You give your time or you give your energy or you give your money if you don't have time and energy to give. If you're trying to strengthen the sun, you're helping your father or the government projects, you're paying for someone's expenses, which means you're strengthening their immunity. Sun relates to immunity. Sun is related to birds and felines. So you can, large felines, you can give a donation. Moon, helping mother. Single mother, battered mothers, people with mental illness, or wildlife of the ocean or the sea. Mars helping brothers, veterans, victims of war, teenagers, helping someone with legal defense. Mars relates to lawyer and legal defense. Dogs and wolves are connected to Mars. Mercury or your cousins, students, schools, university education and cats, Jupiter, guru, mentor, children's welfare, spiritual organization, and elephants or whales. So for Jupiter, give a coconut to an elephant every Thursday. It's very easy. You can do that anytime, okay? <laughs> or feed a whale. I mean, come on, think about it. Feed a whale every Thursday. Venus helping young women, sexual abuse, victims, prostitution victims, the art, entertainment, horses, Saturn, the elderly, the sick, the handicapped, the homeless, donkeys and crows. Rahu is connected with addiction, rehab, drugs, or protection and environment. And K2 is related to ashrams, monasteries, monks, nuns, yogis, owls, and jellyfish. Don't try to feed the jellyfish, but you can donate to an organization. <laughs> Protect the wildlife of the ocean. That's a common thing with Ketu. Okay. Uh, I've rushed with the remedy so that you guys can uh, you know, absorb it all and make sure we have a little time for questions. Um, okay. Uh, Shilajit, uh, somebody, yes, of course, uh, my apologies, uh, Jam Young. Jam Young has a wonderful website full of resources of Tibetan medicine with many remedies, including Shilajit, but there are even more refined. He's an expert in Rasayana and Chulan. I mean, you've got the best resources possible through Jam Young when it comes to choosing the right Rasayana or Chulan for your Ojas. Um, ashwagandha, if you have too much pitta or fire, best not to take in the summer. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, best not to take in the summer. Shilajit, only between October and April. Why on the real time there is no K2? Very good question. Because K2 is not interested in time or even not incarnation. K2 in Vedic astrology is only interested in liberation and moksha. You know, moksha means spiritual liberation. So if it was only for Ketu, the only thing you should do is go to a cave and meditate all day long. Doesn't matter if it's the sun hour, the Mars hour, the Mercury hour, you're supposed to just get out of here, transcend incarnation, get out of the cycle of rebirth, and that's the only job he's interested in. So he's not interested in something in human life, and he's not interested in relationship at all. 
So that's the particularity. That's why Ketu doesn't have a time. And in the Kala Chakra and the Wheel of Time, Ketu doesn't have a direction in particular. So that, but that's, that's a very good question. Any other question? If somebody raises his hand or her hand. In the software, if looking up your nakshatra, what if the percentage left number, if it's low? Um, not sure I understand the question. So let's look at one example. Um, the software will give you here, nakshatra. Oh yeah, well that, that relates to the pada because um, a star is in fact a 13 degrees 20 part of the sky. So in detail, we measure how advanced was your moon or your Saturn inside that little piece of the sky. There was it just in the first pada, the second pada, so we divide in four. And in detail, there's a different meaning. If you're, for instance, here is Danishta. If your uh, um, moon was placed in the first 25% or the second 25% or the third or the fourth, it becomes even more detailed if you want to find infinite information about yourself through the stars. It's um, absolutely fascinating. Um, field of study. In fact, it is said that the, the very, very ancient Vedic astrology was mostly based on the stars. But these were the days when human beings could go out at night at any time and, and watch the stars. So actually, you know, the best remedy, if you are able to do it, uh, and, and if you live in a place where you see the night sky, like, like one of my Ayurvedic uh, trainers say one of the great problems with mankind is that two thirds of mankind doesn't see the Milky Way anymore. You know, in the old days, you would if you if you went to pee at night, you would see the Milky Way. Which means what? You could also, like the ancient yogis would do, you could find your star, you could find your moon star, and you could connect your third eye with your moon star. Now, of course, that's the best remedy. If you can meditate and absorb the light of your nakshatra, which is the flow of prana, and let the flow of prana come into your body. So I know nowadays there are these apps on telephones where you can, you know, you can find, of course, they're not Vedic. But if you, if you get a book on the nakshatras, there are a few books on nakshatras that are to recommend. The Nakshatras by Dennis Harness, which are the equivalent with the um, uh, Western or Arabic stars, okay? So sometimes there's a, a direct uh, connection and then another good resource, the Nakshatras by Camilla Sutton. has also a lot of information. So if you're able to find out where your Nakshatra is in the sky, that's fantastic. And if you're in a place where you can meditate on the light of that star, can't beat that absolutely fantastic okay um <laughs> what's the difference between yoga and nakshatra um yoga is something i'm not going to go into yoga in the information that you get in the program is another layer of information um, yoga is actually one layer even deeper it's half a lunar day and, and then when you go into this, it's, it, it gets information about other things. Yoga is more about accomplishment, is what you do in the world. It's not so much about um, the, um, the relationship like I chose to go into. But um, if we were to go into all of these information that you find here, um, it would be, again, would be infinite. Rico is saying a little bit much for me. Can you do a... Summary. So the summary I gave you earlier here in this slide. Okay, the remedy is the summary is right here at the end. Two things that all of you can do in the same way strengthen Jupiter with the suggestion we gave. 
strengthen Venus to strengthen your Ojas, the force of rejuvenation. And then each of you will have homework to do. Find your nakshatra lord, which planet, okay? Finding your star. And once you have found the star, you can find in the table right here, which planet controls your moon star and your prana, okay? And then you would do the same thing in the summary. You would do the same thing to find which planet is the Lord of resources for healing and then apply a remedy to strengthen that part of your energy. And last thing for relationship, find which planet controls your Titi, your lunar day and find the right remedy that you can connect with to strengthen that planet. A remedy needs to be applied for time over a long period of time. If you have an astrological weakness, that means maybe you have this lack of prana since you were born. So don't you think that just doing it once for a weekend will change anything? That's why you need to choose the right remedy. It means choosing something that you will also enjoy doing and that you can look forward to doing every Sunday or every Saturday or every Monday etc etc okay questions regarding the software uh jagannatha Har. why i'm recommending this because it's free uh, of course there are fantastic softwares for vedic astrology they cost 400 to 500 dollars so i didn't want to suggest anything in that direction and um and, and that software is good enough that for the purpose of doing most of the things you would do without being a professional Jyotish Vedic astrologer, you will find all the information that you need and you can go online and there are tutorials about how to use it and all the functions. I didn't want to waste time and, you know, showing you how the software works when you can do that on your own with all the videos and tutorials online. Okay. Any other question, Michelle or Jamyang? Did I did I miss anything? Did I miss anybody's question? I don't think so. And uh, I do want to tell everybody that Rafael does do fantastic private consultations. Here's his uh, details. I see he's just sharing. You do have to wait a while for appointments, rightly so, because he is doing an excellent job of researching and really accurately. I highly recommend a consultation if you can get one. By the end of this year, you'll probably be lucky, but it's very much worth it. So I just wanted to say that. Thank, thank you. Not yeah, thank you for saying that. And the, the video will be available on the Shangshong website, right, Jamyang? Exactly. We'll upload it. There's already the video from about one year ago. If you look at our YouTube page, Shangshong UK, I can send the link in the chat now. And yeah. uh, so you can see just that. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, just want to mention also that we have this learning uh, platform where we put our videos. Some of the videos are only for our students in Jyotish, which is in the French uh, language. But you can find some of the videos and also Michelle's work with Ayurvedic Nutrition. These are just some of the remedies uh, that are available via, via the platform, but there's a lot available. And then thank you, Jamian, for saying that, um, yeah, Jyotish uh, takes uh, time to prepare a consultation. So, um, yeah, uh, it just happens that <laughs> uh, my time being limited, um, you you will have to be a little patient if you want an appointment. But by any means, I would I would love to to do that. So the animal at Jupiter, remember, is the elephant. So um, you just got a, a right. download of a, a flow of uh, elephant knowledge. So thanks everybody for attending. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And um, and take care of your energy with the little tips we shared.